Hi, this is Carlos from RC Advisor. Uh, this is the beginning of the build uh, series of videos for uh, the Picadol design, which is a half a pound uh, joint wing uh, park flyer, you know, foam park flyer that's supposed to be uh, that's very um, maneuverable. So anyway, I put here on the on my building board pretty much everything that I think uh, I'll need to build this model, and I, and I just want to run through. But my building board is actually a door, but it's, it's, it's very flat, pretty, pretty solid. Um, on top of it, I have a cutting mat. This, is, uh, this one, I believe, is from Fiskars. And it measures, I don't know, about 37 by 25 inches. So it's, it's definitely more than big enough. Uh, you know, a, a sheet of foam board is 20 by 30. So I just need something that's a little bigger. I have a couple of rulers that I, that I like to use. I've had this one for a while. I'm very happy with it. But it, you know, it's all metal rulers. Uh, this is three feet. This one is a foot and a half. I got this one not that long ago. A little, a little bit of a problem with this one is that it's it's kind of slippery. So when I put it down, I just have to make sure I'm holding it down very well. Otherwise, it, it tends, you know, it has tends to shift. This one, on the other hand. I'm not sure what the material is. I think it might be aluminum. Uh, it, it it stays in place much better, so that's something to keep in mind. And both of them have have uh, English and metric, which is which is very handy. And uh, you know, with the um, with the cutting mat, it's divided into one inch squares, which is just really handy because I have lines that go all the way across, so I know when some, something is lined up. But and it make you know when I'm when I'm cutting something, it's really easy. You know, I just line up the lines or or the dots. It's got little dots, and and I know I'm gonna do a straight line or a straight cut. Um, but also uh, again, it's got inch measurement, so it's it's very it makes it very quick and easy to measure things. You know, it's put whatever I need to measure on top of it, and you know, especially if, if it's down to a quarter of an inch, then just mark it. So, so I, I mean, I'm all about keeping it simple, inexpensive, and fast. And this uh, cutting mat is just, uh, it saves me a ton of time. And again, I have a dif different size rulers so that I don't have to be struggling too much to fit things on there. I also have this, this one, which is like a metal T square, or I don't want to call it an L square. Um, and honestly, I don't use this one at all that much. Uh, but I do, especially when I first uh, lay out the lines on a on a sheet of foam board, so it can come in handy. But I wouldn't call it critical because uh, you know I, I sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't. Um, on, on top of the cutting mat, I, I like to put wax paper, and you know very inexpensive from the supermarket, and it works really well to keep the glue from sticking to the to the cutting mat so that it lasts longer. Now just the, the only thing the only problem with the wax paper and you can see you can see it here is that if I'm cutting, you know if I'm if I'm when, when I'm build the building process mostly involves measuring, cutting and gluing. Well I need to make sure I don't have I, I, I take out the wax paper when I'm cutting and then I put it back down when I'm gluing and sometimes I'm lazy. So I'll try and cut on top of the wax paper and then I just cut right through it so it doesn't work as well then. But it's pretty inexpensive and it's very reusable. Uh, I buy these, uh, you know, these like half-sized paper towels, which just come in very handy, especially when I'm when I'm gluing. Uh, I got a whole bunch of these uh, little kind of bean bags. They have they they're just filled with like ornamental stones. Let me pull some of them out. So these are smooth stones. I got them at a craft store. These little bags are. You know, really kind of party favor bags, but it's just whatever it's inexpensive. They're cloth and they're close, so they they meet my needs. You know, nothing fancy, but they work. Um, the glues I, I'm I've switched to using these Loctite Crafters, and I'm I'm pretty happy with it. You know, it's uh, non toxic, which is nice. It doesn't have much of a smell. You can clean it clean it up with water. It doesn't harm uh, foam. Uh, it, they say two hours before you move the part. After one hour, it's it's usually good enough to 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 that it can be manipulated without it coming apart. Of course, 
with like with most glues and tapes you know you really need to give it 24 hours before it's fully dried um, I'm still using the liquid nails just because it, it sets in 10 minutes so it tends to be a lot faster and you know and especially what I tend to use it for is the hinging because I, I'm doing that at the very end and I just don't want it taking forever so I just do a little use a little bit of this for that but it's totally optional uh, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of the uh, glue sticks they work really great when I'm, I have to glue two pieces of foam together and it's really strong it doesn't weigh it, it, you know basically it doesn't add any weight to it and and it's fast you know just go through and so I'm really happy with this just make sure you use one that has a, a nice uh, easy to see color you know before it dries so you can see where you put it on otherwise you're just going to be guessing um, as far as uh, cutting tools I really just use my exacto well I use the I use the uh, the meter saw but this is an exacto knife uh, I'm pretty happy with this handle you know they, they tend not to last so long because I use it so much and and don't don't be cheap I bought this hundred pack of uh, exacto blades for 15 bucks uh, this is a few years ago but that works out to 15 cents for each one so that's that's not much and they they, do, they they get dull pretty quickly so you know I, I pretty much um, use a new one at the beginning of a new project and I just put this one on so it's ready to go uh, the other cutting, cutting tool that I use is this little uh, saw blade with this is uh, I don't know who makes this it might be Dubro or something but it's a little meter meter box so that I can do 45 degree and 90 degree cuts uh, it's not the fastest you know the fit the fit on, on this are just really small so it takes a lot of going but I just don't have to do that much cutting you know I don't, I don't use it for the foam I use it for the dowels and the dowels are just not that big um, for for sanding purposes I got this metal it's like a sanding stick and it's got core you know I don't know I guess you call it call this coarse and and fine and I've had it for years I really should to get a new one you know it's pretty worn and, and messed up but it just comes in so handy um, and I've got bunches of, of uh, sanding paper which I never use because this is just this just meets my needs I use uh, masking tape for holding parts down so so it's a combination of the bean bag and masking tape and you know masking tape tape is just inexpensive and it goes on I mean you you do the one thing with masking tape is that it will leave a mark on foam so if you care about a really nice finish on foam then either don't use masking tape I mean I know there's some some masking tape out there that's that the glue it's is does it's not gonna mess up things as much but I just I don't care that much I'm you know I'm really about keeping it simple and fast so this is what I use and I guess this is about uh, three quarters of an inch wide masking tape um, I've got some clear packing tape but this is I, I think I'm only going to use this to stiffen up the control surfaces so th this is not that critical I mean you need something but that I don't use I, I'm not going to use that too much and this is my Medipore H uh, 3M surgical tape and I've been using that in the last few builds that I've done and I'm pretty happy with it. It's very lightweight. The it, the glue is just amazing. I mean, the one downside to it is that it's kind it's a soft cotton, which just gets dirty pretty pretty quickly. Again, I usually just don't care that much about about the looks, you know, especially if if it's a prototype. Um, you will need, you know, besides the um, the um, part. I guess it's a, it's a blue wonder motor I, I put all my electronics in here so it's a blue wonder motor you know it's about 24 gram motor um, you know 500 million power battery 5 gram servos this one got messed up so I think I'm going to be throwing it away uh, 10 amp speed control and of course you know a, a relatively small receiver so um, and I, I got these uh, stick mounts which go onto a 3 8 inch square dowel and it, it seems to work well I, I suppose that you don't really have to use a stick mount you can just put some sort of a firewall back there but it seems to work well so I'm, I'm happy 
the, the only thing that's unusual is the servo extension and I didn't pay much for, for the ones that I have and they, they work fine and you, you do need something to be able to reach back there. Um, as far as tools, again, I use uh, alcohol, this is 70% alcohol for taking the paper off of the foam board. Uh, not everybody likes to use the alcohol and that's fine, it's, I, again, I'm all about speed. So I just wet it with the alcohol and then I have this large size garbage bag, I put it in there and it doesn't take too long. I think maybe in half an hour, uh, at most about an hour, it is enough. I can I pull it out and see if it's if it's soaked through and, and it's usually real quick and easy. Just don't I mean I, I work quickly so I don't I don't sit there you know for for, for an hour with the uh, smelling the fumes. I make so make sure you have some ventilation and work quickly and put it in the bag and go to another room in the meantime. So that, that works well for me. Um, as far as supplies for building the airplane, uh, you, you will need a, uh, I would say, a couple of sheets of foam board. This is the stuff from Dollar Tree. And you know, it's, it's, it has a, quite a bend to it, but once you take the paper off, it, it's a lot straighter than, than this. So, so I think two sheets should do it. Uh, you, you do need a, a square, 3 eighths of an inch uh, hardwood dowel and that's for the motor mount. But you really only need, I think it's only gonna be like, you know, two or three inches. So it's not that much. Uh, I don't know how much this one costs. It's about a dollar or two. You're also going to need a couple of 3 16th square dowels. Uh, and that's for the reinforcement at the back and at the front. Uh, these ones are marked a dollar each. So it's a dollar for each one of those. And you will use about one and a half of those. And, and you also need a 3 16 round uh, dowel for use on the uh, leading edge of the wing. And I don't know how much I paid for this one. It's going to be, I don't know, between maybe 50 or 60 cents. And this one is four feet long. You can get this at like Lowe's and, and Home Depot. And uh, one of them is enough for one airplane. So, you know, as far as supplies, you know, foam board is two bucks. I got three, four, five, six, seven. So maybe maybe seven dollars in, in supplies for building this airplane. So that's not so bad. Uh, you're also, I like to use this, I, I cook pieces. This is a nylon tie. And you know, it, it, you want to use the black one. But I just cut pieces and I cut it at an angle. That's what I did with Modify. I'm still doing that. It works well enough. Um, but it's definitely not the only way to do this. So if you get a, if you have another way of hinging and a mounting coming over the control horn for your control surface, that's fine. You know, pretty much anything will work. And this is a piece of, of piano wire. If I can figure it out, here we go. A piece of piano wire. The, the thickness is not critical. And in fact, I don't even remember how thick this, this piece is. But the point is that, you know, it needs to be stiff enough so you can go about you know three inches or you know four inches without too much trouble and of course it's something that you can fit into the hole in this servo even though in my case I had to enlarge the hole a little bit so so this is pretty inexpensive you know I think about a quarter I think I, I paid for this one and the nylon ties you can get a whole bunch for a couple of bucks so definitely less than 10 bucks to build this airplane of course not counting the the electronics and uh, nothing that's hard to find. Um, you know, you may have to go around a little bit looking for the uh, for the hardwood. Uh, I don't. I'm not using. None of these are balsa. These are all hardwood. You know, poplar or birch or whatever. You know, uh, most of the time they don't label them. So there's no balsa in this airplane. You know, it's just foam and hardwood. Anyway, I think this is everything that I need. I'm ready to go. So in the next video, I'm going to start building the uh, final version of uh, Piccolo.